What's up, everybody? I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on some developments in my platform, which is Omni Health and Lifestyle, if you don't know. Um, first things first is that I'm starting a podcast. So you guys are getting a glimpse of what my podcast will look like. This is the backdrop, and it's going to revolve around health, wellness, arts, and lifestyle. So it'll be an offshoot of my current business and what I'm doing right now. But the other piece to this is something that I mentioned on Facebook a couple months ago, which is face reading. So for a lot of you who are in the Chinese medical field, you'll know what face reading is. People who are not are like, what the hell is face reading? So <laughs> what the hell is face reading? It occurred to me that most people probably don't know what face reading is. And if they hear the word face reading, they probably think of palm reading or psychics or some new age thing. And so it's definitely not new age. It's been around for thousands of years. It's one of the branches of Chinese medicine. It's an offshoot of further diagnostic assessment in the Chinese medicine spectrum, but it can be applied to anything and everything in life. So I just wanted to give you guys a backdrop on what face rating is should you want one. So you have a framework to plug into and kind of have your feelers out like, do I actually want to get a face reading from Gray and what would be the, the benefit of this? So in Chinese medicine, there's something called the three treasures, which are Jing, Qi, and Shen. Now, these three parameters of a person are said to be the most vital aspects of people, of the human experience, and they should be protected like a treasure. So Jing is the material essence, our sexual vitality. Um, in men, it's the seminal fluid. In women, it's in the uterus and the ovaries, the aspects of us that actually reproduce and create life. In the second layer, we look at qi, which is, that word is tossed around a lot. People say qi and they think of magic woo-woo stuff, but really what it boils down to is how our body creates energy through breath, food, and the bioelectricity that our body produces. So bioelectricity, I think, is the modern definition that people maybe could get behind. And then the next piece is shen, which is consciousness or the spirit of a person, the emotional disposition that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. So when we do a face reading, these three parameters are taken into account. We look at the jing of a person, the qi, and the shen. And as I read a face, what I'm looking at is what needs attention for one and what's calling out to me because it can be different depending on the time of year, the person, where they are in their life, what they're going through. But these things are used in a face reading. These are the lenses that I look through to assess a person. And why is face reading good? Why is it helpful? Why does my teacher, Lillian Bridges, why has she become world famous by doing face reading? She's been on Dr. Oz. She's done, not, I'm not name dropping. I'm just saying she's done a lot with this, a lot more than I thought could be possible. So she does face reading for corporate CEOs and she looks at people's faces of the staff and saying this person's got, really got an aptitude for A, B, and C and they should be here. So she's actually advises people at the corporate level using face reading. It's amazing. And it had, she had huge effects with me. I got a face reading when I was 30, and she called some things that about three years down the road were right on point. And she even called it out that I would be 33 when these things would come down the pike. So about two years ago, I dove in deep with her. I met her back in 2012, but two years ago, I formally studied, went through her face reading program in Seattle at the Lotus Institute, and I'm out now. And I'm looking to do face readings for people. So... To give you guys a framework of what, of how you can look at this and how it can make sense is that if we look in the natural world and we look at, say, uh, a tiger, a tiger has an orange body with black stripes, has sharp teeth and claws. Now, these physical attributes, the jing, the material structure of this, of this animal, points to a mechanism that it fulfills in its ecosystem or environment. Sharp teeth, because it's a carnivore claws to grasp and bring down prey, these stripes to provide camouflage. So these physical markers point to mechanisms that it should naturally adopt. And people are no different because we're mammals. We're a part of the animal kingdom, according to Chinese medical thinking. So the attributes that we see on a face can point to a lot of different things, natural abilities, organ harmony or disharmony. So we can actually look at organ function through the, through the face. If any of you have done acupuncture or gone to an acupuncturist, they will take your pulses and look at the coating and the coloring of your tongue to assess organ function, which I know is outside the, 
the branch of Western medicine, but it's wholly effective and it's how they diagnose in Chinese medicine. It's very interesting. So the face reading is just another way to dive into this deeper. The good thing about face reading and why it's fascinating is that people can be sitting on winning lottery tickets. They might have these really strong features that predispose them to certain aptitudes or strengths or jobs and they are in the completely wrong field or doing something they just don't like at all. So face reading is a wonderful way to harness and move a person's life force. How do you look at the face and how do you guide them into things that could be more optimal for them? Now, the other piece to this is health. It's not just lifestyle guidance, it's definitely health. If we look at Western medicine, we know that if a person presents with a very yellow face that they have jaundice or a liver disharmony. When I was in acupuncture school and working with patients, I had a number of dialysis patients and they all had these very dark circles under their eyes, which is one of the telltale signs in Chinese medicine of kidney dysfunction. So if we look at this, we see these things in Western medicine and typically the things that are identified in Western medicine is when the disease has gotten really deep, really far gone and not past the point of no return. Jaundice can be reversed, but typically it's when things have gotten pretty rough. So. If we extrapolate this idea in the spectrum of Chinese medicine, they looked for more subtle colorings and the different areas of the face correspond to different areas of organ function. Where wrinkles form point to certain emotional proclivities. And face reading, and through uh, my background in Chinese medicine especially because I've been to acupuncture school and have the diagnostic tools to really hone in on this, it helps me. And it's a, it's a great combination. So. If you guys are interested in getting a face reading, it's about 75 minutes. It can be done at a distance, so we don't have to be in person. I'll need some pictures of you, some pictures of your ears, because that's part of the assessment as well. And then we would just have a 75-minute session where I go through and give you all the markers and give you the, the pieces that you have an aptitude for in your life through the looking of your, your face. So another way to look at this is if we look at, say, athletes. Athletes typically have very well-shaped abdomens that fit very well into their, into their pelvis. They usually don't have disproportionate hips. Their center of gravity is usually very succinct, tight, and fit. If we look at pianists, very large hands. Runners, like the Kenyan runners, they have like long chests, or deep chests, long legs designed for running. We'll see these markers in the natural world in, in physical traits in people and they do point to something so a lot of Chinese medicine is about it's a naturalistic philosophy so they look at the cues in the natural world and then they look at the human structure and say how can we apply this where is this relevant for us so again I don't want you guys to think this is fortune telling this is not me telling you your future and that you're going to start a foundation and you're going to do something crazy this is just about organ function health how are your emotions? And where are you losing and leaking energy in the physical form? And maybe at the emotional too, because we all do somewhere. So if this is of interest to you guys, if you are interested, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to work with you. And you can private message me or you can contact me through my website, whatever is clever. And I look forward to working with some of you. Thanks.